In the middle of Huntington, West Virginia, there is a river. Next to this river, there is a steel mill. And next to the steel mill, there is a school. In the middle of this school, there is a fountain. Each year, on the exact same day, at the exact same hour, the water to this fountain is turned off. And in this moment, once every year, throughout the town, throughout the school, time stands still. November 14th, 1970. The Marshall Thundering Herd football team was on their way home to Huntington. They just suffered defeat at the hands of the East Carolina Pirates, losing a tight contest in Greenville, North Carolina. That night, the entire Marshall entourage boarded a charter flight out of nearby Kinston. Southern Airways Flight 932 was a mostly uneventful flight despite the sour weather. As the plane approached the runway at Huntington's Tri-State Airport, the pilots were warned that rain, fog, and smoke would make landing more difficult than usual. The poor conditions still disoriented the flight crew, leading them to assume a higher altitude than they actually had. By the time they realized their mistake, it was too late. At 7.36 p.m., just 5,500 feet from the runway, the plane slammed into a hillside, killing all 75 people on board. Among those who lost their lives, 36 Thundering Herd players, 9 members of the coaching staff, 25 boosters, and 5 crew members. The crash rocked the town of Huntington, Marshall University, and the entire college football world. After convincing the university president not to suspend the school's football program, players who had stayed behind for the trip to ECU, along with family members of those whose lives were lost, had to fight hard in order to get a team together for the 1971 season. One of their biggest battles was petitioning the NCAA to waive their ban on freshman varsity players. The town's struggle in the wake of the disaster is encapsulated in the moving 2006 film, We Are Marshall. The phrase, We Are Marshall, became a part tribute, part rallying cry as a result of the crash. Despite their disappointing record under new head coach Jack Langle, going 9-33 during his tenure, the spirit of the Huntington community never wavered, and the legacy of the 1970 football team still lives on today. Here at Spring Hill Cemetery, a memorial dedicated to the victims of the crash looks out over the Marshall campus, and six of those who were never identified are buried here as well. Neat Ruffin, an injured defensive back who didn't make the trip to ECU that fateful weekend, has also been laid to rest at the site. Each year on the anniversary of the tragedy, a ceremony is held in Buskirk Field where this memorial fountain is turned off until spring. It's a symbolic gesture of remembrance and serves as a reminder to students and faculty throughout the winter of the pain endured by this community. Back in the 1970s, the herd could be found on fall Saturdays at Fairfield Stadium. Opened in 1927, the red brick venue was replaced by a sparkly new stadium prior to the 1991 season. The original scoreboard at Fairfield Stadium was salvaged and can now be found in the parking lot of Gino's Pizzeria near campus. At night, it lights up and displays the final score of Marshall's first home game after the crash, a 15-13 win over Xavier on September 25th, 1971. A few blocks away, 
The thundering herd of the present trampled their opponents at the 38,000 seat June C. Edwards Stadium. The venue is named for philanthropist and New Orleans jazz singer June Edwards, and the playing field is named for her husband James. Together, the couple donated over $65 million to Marshall University. Along with South Carolina's Williams Bryce Stadium, it's one of only two stadiums in FBS named after a woman. The Herd have an impressive 140 wins at the Joan, losing just 25 games since its grand opening in 1991. It's the highest win percentage of any FBS team at their current home. Marshall has jumped around between conferences over its long football history. It was an independent at the time of the 1970 tragedy. The Herd later joined the Southern Conference, where they won two FCS championships in 1992 and 1996. A move to the Mid-American Conference in 1997 brought five conference championships before the school joined Conference USA in 2005. In 2014, Marshall defeated Louisiana Tech to capture their first Conference USA championship. The Thundering Herd have been invited to 16 bowl games as well, compiling a record of 12 and 4. This year's Memorial Game, as it's come to be known, saw the Middle Tennessee Blue Raiders come to town to take on 16th ranked Marshall. The Herd handily dealt MTSU a 42-14 loss, extending their unbeaten streak to seven with just three games left in the season at the time of this release. The game was one to remember. The national anthem was sung by Grammy Award winner and native of nearby Canova, Michael W. Smith. Both the fans and players donned black to honor the plane crash victims. And a banner commemorating the lost players was also unveiled prior to kickoff. Fifty years ago, this quintessential West Virginia town was rocked by a horror that many hoped to never experience. But the Marshall family pushed through. They fought hard to get their boys back on the field, and today are blessed with a solid, gritty football program. Every Saturday, every game, it's for them, for the 75. The Sons of Marshall will never be forgotten.